they come in their hundreds every day to visit a magical place in the center of Johannesburg, a place where a stunning display of night skies can be seen even in broad daylight. Built in the 1960s, the planetarium is one of the most popular destinations for school trips in Johannesburg. Children from the city and further afield visit here frequently to marvel at the skies recreated by a special projector. Planetariums are kind of like an interface between what astronomers are doing, what's happening in research, and the general public, like in the broader sense, including the education system and just interested members of the general public. Um, so we kind of see ourselves as connecting the, the two areas. Most of our visitors are from schools. We get about 60 to 70,000 kids each year um, coming for a school show that ties into the astronomy in their syllabus and supports that. Um, the rest of them, like 15 to 20,000 a year, is members of the general public. The planetarium is owned and operated by Wits University and is a resource for students, although it is not part of an academic faculty. Flanagan's vision for the venue extends beyond a fun school outing. She wants to motivate children to get excited about science and astronomy. We need more astronomers, okay? Um, if we don't train more astronomers, we're going to be renting out our facilities to the first world. So that's a big, big concern. But um, <clears throat> what we, um, in the bigger picture, we need to, and we can, use astronomy to raise an interest in general science, okay? General science careers. It's, it's possibly, okay, I'm sure people will argue with this, but a lot of us think it's the most accessible science. It's not um, particle physics or something. It's something that you mention stars to someone, they know what you're talking about. So there's an entry level right from um, knowing what stars are and wanting to know what is a star all the way up to like how do you actually know that that's a black hole? How do you do all the maths behind it? And there's a huge continuum there and we see ways that you can use astronomy to pull people into in schools learning, learning maths. Doing, doing maths, not doing maths literacy. And while there's been an increased interest in astronomy because of the popularity of the SKA, Flanagan says a lot more needs to be done. I think we can do a lot in South Africa that people can't do in other countries. For example, we have um, what we've seen a lot here at the Planetarium is our language challenge, okay? Which I think is a lot more challenging and so we can learn a lot more from it. It can push us further than, for example, in America. Places like this and events like Scopex, the annual astronomy fair, spreads enthusiasm, turning more of us into stargazers. We saw our night sky planets like Mars and the Curiosity stars. It was really great. I saw all of our um, stars. It was really wonderful. The South African Astronomical Observatory lies in the heart of the mother city's bohemian, most free-thinking suburb, appropriately called Observatory after its most famous landmark. The project was commissioned in 1820 and would become the first modern permanent observatory in Africa. More than a century later, it continues to capture the imagination of stargazers in Cape Town and beyond. This observatory is very popular. Uh, it's popular among the members of the public, uh, the learners and the teachers, so uh, we receive lots of students. The observatory revels in its rich history and offers visitors the opportunity to step back in time and experience stargazing as it was back when the first sailors first travelled around the Cape of Good Hope. One of the oldest telescopes on site uh, the McLean's telescope, which is located in the 1896 uh, building. So, but also we have a museum, which people can visit and uh, host our old instruments and tools that were used in the past. We also have the National Library of Astronomy. The South African Astronomical Observatory is part of the National Research Foundation and falls under the government's Department of Science and Technology. The majority of research is conducted through telescopes located outside the Karoo town of Sutherland. The observatory in Cape Town, however, remains an important part of the department because it gives ordinary Cape Townians the opportunity to view the stars in the heart of the city. And from
from stars of a celestial nature, we turned to entrepreneurial stars. We took a drive to the Pretoria township of Mamelodi to meet up with Ngobi Mashlangu and Maputi Khomo, tourism entrepreneurs, partners in life, and partners in Ubusha Benaka tours, the Gauteng finalists in the 2013 Etea Awards. Entrepreneurial spirit is found among many South Africans and Etea is there to support and recognize them. From humble beginnings in 2008, Nkobi and Maputi have made a success of their business, offering a range of cultural, educational, recreational and adventure tours. We also do your um, travel packages, your, your getaway, your weekend getaways and your travel incentives and we also obviously owning um, a fleet of vehicles will also do your transfers and your shuttle. Yes. And yeah, we will be introducing soon a uh, Soweto, Soweto party bus, we've got a bus that uh, we're going to convert into a party bus that will be running around all the townships including Mamelodi but it's going to be studying in, in Soweto. One of Ubuhle's featured tours is to Mamelodi, a suburb that started as an apartheid-era township when 16 houses were built on the farm Flakfontein on the northeastern edge of Pretoria in 1953. The name Mamelodi, or Mother of Melodies, was a nickname given to Paul Kruger for his ability to whistle and mimic bird calls. Ubutle started off doing township tours to Soweto, so the move to Pretoria gave them an opportunity to expand their offerings to include Mamelodi. My brother started uh, getting an interest in, uh, in construction and he opened a construction company and he left the tourism company uh, for me. So I took, the, I took over the tourism company and uh, roped in uh, my business partner, Maputni, Maputi Homo. Uh, then what we did, we also changed the name of the company to be called Ubutle Benaka Tours. Uh, uh, Maputi was, uh, she, she, she was working for a travel incentive uh, company, but she also has a, an accounting background. Uh, which is also an advantage for us uh, because mostly uh, we're targeting the domestic market. Designated a blacks only area by the Group Areas Act, the only whites who lived in Mamelodi in the turbulent 1980s were anti apartheid activist and preacher Nico Smith and his wife Ellen. Modern day Mamelodi is still over 99% black and is home to over 250,000 people. Starting a business in the tourism sector is not without its challenges as Nkobi and Puti soon discovered. Basically, when we started the company, we did uh, face some challenges. Uh, challenges when it comes to uh, like access to markets. And uh, the, major, the, major, the, 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 major, the major problem is, uh, is, uh, is this big capital. We've, uh, we've tried going to banks and trying to get finances from banks, uh, but some banks uh, they do, do turn us down because uh, they don't believe in us. And then we did go to some uh, government institutions uh, to get finance, but we did uh, get finance from uh, your DTIs, your TEPs, they do assist us. But yeah, the major thing in, uh, in this industry is uh, understanding the industry itself and also uh, access to markets and also the capital itself. Mamelodi is synonymous with struggle veteran Solomon Matlangu, whose execution in 1979 provoked international protest. Besides Ngobi sharing a surname with a struggle veteran, Ubutle contribute to the legacy that he left behind by caring for his mother. For our Mamelodi CSI, we've decided that the part of the proceeds of our tours, we're going to be donating towards this house so that they can build a monument or a museum so that people can come and view and see exactly what went on in this house and how he lived. And during one of our tours, you can actually get an opportunity to hear um, Solomon's mother, uh, her, oral, her version of events on Solomon's disappearance, a part of um, her oral history. Mamelodi is, as with most townships in South Africa, bustling, friendly and lively, especially in the early morning and evening rush hours with many residents working in the Greater Pretoria metropolitan region. The streets are lined with informal industry, capitalizing on the passing trade, eking out a living on the streets. From here, uh, our future, we want to be uh, starting to uh, access uh, the SEDEC region, uh, doing uh, your multi-country tours, because uh, we've noticed that a lot of uh, tour operators uh, that are from uh, Europe and America, they, they do your multi-country tours. So yeah, in the next in the next four, three to five years, we'll be uh, doing your multi-country tours, and then we also will be. Uh, 
as well as you see places like this there's youth standing around the corner we want to try and open up a Ubutli Academy where we train them up as tour guides where they will take ownership of this township and actually take tourists around to, to, show, to, showcase them, to showcase the township the best way they know how. All yeah, right. the reason why we're focusing on youth because uh, they know they, they, they've got the local knowledge. So yeah, that's why we want to train them. Ubutle are one of many tour operators that provide visitors with a real insight into Mamalodi life balancing the rich history of Mamalodi with Shabin stopovers and exciting interaction with the locals. Come evening, African jazz livens the Shabins as patrons relax after a hard day at work.